So you want a cool looking sporty retro motorcycle, well a production cafe racer ought to fit the bill and so here are 14 of the best on the market in price order ascending. Starting off truly at the bottom of the price spectrum we've got the FB Mondial HPS 125 for just under four grand. It has to be said it's a very striking and unusual looking bike for the money and it's definitely going to turn some heads with the gold anodized hard where it's got wavy discs, the swing arm mounted license plate, high level exhaust and those bold graphics on the tank and side panels. Performance specs aren't really going to set the world alight but a little 125 like this is really built to be an accessible first bike with a bit of extra style. An accessible it is with a low seat height of 785mm and a very manageable weight of 130 kilograms. It's certainly one to consider if you're on a strict budget and you want something that looks quite impressive. They also do a third version if that's your thing, it maybe looks a bit more cafe racery. I'm gonna give each bike a score along the way so we can maybe declare a winner by the end. So looks, I'm gonna give this one like five out of ten. It looks way better than the price point suggests but maybe not quite as nicely designed as some of the other bikes on the list. Performance realistically you know we'll get to some pretty quick bikes so I'm gonna have to give it a one but in terms of affordability it's 10 out of 10. So moving up a little bit in terms of price and performance and stature we've got the Herald Cafe 400. The styling on this one is a little more traditional and I think it looks very nice indeed. It's kind of like a mini Triumph Thruxton which is a massive compliment when it comes to cafe racers. It's got a 397cc single cylinder engine that makes 27 horsepower and there's decent suspension and twin discs up front so there ought to be a bit more fun to be had than the Mondial. And yet it's still only 165 kilograms and 790 mil in the seat so again a great choice for the novice rider or anyone looking for a nippy little city bike. It also comes in a 125 version which is super affordable at less than three grand. Looks I'm going to give this one a six because I think it fulfills the cafe racer brief a little better than the last bike bike. Performance, 3 out of 10. Affordability, not quite as cheap, so 9 out of 10. Now if you fancy something that looks a little more modern, then look no further than the Husqvarna Vitpilum 401. At a touch over 5 grand, you get a very sweet looking bike that's almost a bit futuristic, but then with some classic cafe styling cues like the round headlight, spoke wheels and clip-on bars. Performance is a little more serious than the Herald, you get 44 horsepower from a similar sized engine and there's decent hardware with suspension from W. WP and brakes from Bybray, which is the budget friendly sub brand of Brembo. Now I haven't ridden this 401 version yet but the 701 is somewhat similar and I had an absolute hoot with that bike when I borrowed one for a couple of weeks. They're super light and agile and sporty but relatively modest on power and so you really do feel like you're giving it a good thrashing on the road. They're brilliant fun. I'm gonna give this one seven for looks. I think it's quite a handsome machine. Performance Five out of ten. Affordability eight. Now, before we get on to the next one, I just want to say a massive thanks to Flying Eyes for sponsoring this video. They make these awesome sunglasses that have genuinely solved a real world problem for me. You see, I like to wear sunnies when I'm on the bike, but regular frames always give me a ridiculous headache after like an hour or so. I was extremely excited when they reached out to me about this product because. They're like one millimeter thin on the arms, so they just slip into your motorcycle helmet perfectly and you barely know they're there. Also, check this out. They're super flexible and they just spring back. Wonderful! So comfortable under a motorcycle helmet and yet at the same time they're just as good as any other pair of sunglasses to wear. They've got polycarbonate lenses so they're shatterproof and scratch resistant. They're super lightweight so you barely even feel them and also they've got a bunch of great styles and colour choices for both the frames and the lenses so there's something to suit all tastes. Honestly these are what I wear on the bike pretty much all the time now and quite a lot of the time off it. Links are down in the description where you can find out more and also Flying Eyes have been kind enough to give me a 10% discount code for my viewers so a massive thanks again to Flying Eyes for their support. I am gonna take them off now despite the fact that they are super comfortable. 
because wearing sunglasses indoors does make it a little bit difficult to read my script. Back to the bikes and next up we've got the Continental GT from Royal Enfield, a very well priced bike that's proven to be super popular since it was launched a few years back. It gets their 650cc twin cylinder engine that isn't necessarily going to deliver hair raising levels of performance, it's 47 horsepower peak and it weighs 212 kilograms, but it does have a beautiful character and feel and sound which makes it perfect for those chilled Sunday back road excursions. From a styling perspective, I think they've absolutely nailed it as well. It's almost the exact form factor you'd imagine when you hear the words cafe racer and there are plenty of vivid color choices too, with my personal favorite being their classic rocker red. I should also add then it's the same for a lot of bikes on this list as well, that you can get an aftermarket sort of cafe racer style fit that really does, you know, for a few hundred dollars, transform the look of the bike and makes it look more authentically cafe racer. Looks wise, I'm going to give this one an eight, pretty high scoring because I think it's a pretty damn good looking bike. Performance, probably like four out of 10. Affordability, eight again. If you've got an extra grand to spare though, then you might want to take a close look at the Suzuki SV650X. Granted, it doesn't quite deliver on the proper cafe racer looks. It's got a tuck and roll brown seat and a mini fairing, but they're just token measures really on a modern bike. But for seven grand, you are getting pretty decent performance and also all the character of a genuine V-twin. 72 horsepower is the sort of power level where it becomes like not boring to ride on the road. And then with a cheeky little slip on exhaust, the soundtrack would also contribute to the entertainment. Look, the SV is a proven bike. It's still super popular with even experienced riders. So you're basically buying a solid bike, but this X version just adds a little bit more cafe charm. Looks wise, it's a five out of 10. It's a bit of a mix and match. Performance, six. Affordability, seven. Before you pull the trigger though, you should take a look at the XSR 700 from Yamaha, which is in direct competition with the SV650X. Yes, it's a little more spendy, but what you're getting is a retro styling package on top of the MT-07 platform, which is one of the most joyously playful bikes you can buy in the middleweight category. At the heart of it, we've got their CP2 parallel twin, which they've deployed extensively across the Yamaha lineup from the Tracer 7 Tourer to the Tenere Adventure Bike to the R7 Supersport. And ultimately, it's so good that it works in pretty much any scenario. The only downside of the XSR is that it's clearly a body kit on a modern engine and chassis. And so it doesn't look anywhere near as cohesive as something like the Enfield. I wouldn't say it's ugly, but it just doesn't have the finesse or timeless lines or neatness to the finish. Whether that really matters or not depends on whether you're a bit of a poser or not. But if you're watching a video about the best cafe racers, you probably are in which case it does matter. Looks wise, I'm gonna give it a three in the context of being a cafe racer. Performance, six, similar to the SV. Affordability, seven. One thing I will say to the detriment of the XSR and the SV650 is that you do see a lot of them out and about. They're good bikes. But perhaps part of the appeal of cafe racer ownership is to have something that's a little bit less mainstream. It's quite a jump up in price to 10 grand, but that sort of money will get you a beautiful machine from CCM. A lot less common. You won't see many of these out on the road. And also it's open to customer configuration on their website as long as you got a little bit more budget. Now they did used to make a genuinely titled Cafe Racer model, but that was quite some time ago and it was a limited run. So safe to assume they've all been sold. In 2022, you'll have to make do with the Spitfire 6. It's pretty close and probably with the configurator, you can get it somewhere near to that Cafe Racer spec. You're not gonna get the most exhilarating bike possible for 10 grand, but what a beautiful thing to own and ride. Looks, I'm gonna give it an eight for originality and that sort of like trellis frame and swing arm looks incredible. Performance is more like a five. It's nice and light, but not super powerful. And then affordability, six. Now, if you do want the most exhilarating bike possible for 10 grand, then I can tell you straight away on this list, or certainly in the retro segment, is the XSR 900 from Yamaha. This bike is the big brother 
of the XSR700, and it basically takes the triple cylinder engine and chassis from their MT-09 modern naked and styles it up to hark back to the Yamaha race bikes of the late 80s and early 90s. Visually, the seat unit is more than a little divisive, but I reckon if you spec it with the fly screen from the Yamaha accessories catalog, it sort of balances the bike out a little bit and gives it a smidge of that fairing and seat hump cafe look. Again, like the 700, it's not gonna be the most cohesive or flowing design on the list, but it's a ridiculously fun bike to ride with bags of performance, and that's always gonna leave you with a massive grin. Looks, I'm gonna give it a five. I quite like it, but I wouldn't say it's like elegant or beautiful. Performance, we'll give it an eight. It's getting towards the top end of the bikes on this list, and then affordability, six. Also, around the 10 grand mark, just a couple hundred quid more, I present you with another option, and that's the Ducati Scrambler Night Shift. It's super similar in spec to the base 800 icon model, but it ups the level of finish with a stealthy grey paint job, side number boards, a bench seat, spoke wheels, and some flat handlebars for a slightly more road bias riding position. The standout feature of these bikes for me is the engine. It's an 803cc air-cooled L-twin, and it provides some genuine old-school vibes that aren't necessarily present in bikes like the XSR900. And although it's pretty laid back, it makes 73 horsepower peak, there's still just enough performance there for a fairly lively rip on a country back road, which is exactly what you want from a cafe racer. I think this is a smart looking bike. I'm going to give it seven on 10. Performance is like a six, you know, it's quick, but not super quick. And then affordability like the Yamaha, again, a six. Now from Kawasaki, we have the Z900 RS and it offers something a little different in that it's the only inline four engine on this list. Twins are the default in the retro segment, so it's sometimes nice to see something else. And the Kawasaki certainly delivers that smooth, revy fun that you'd expect from this engine configuration. It's also fit into the bike's heritage because the visual design heavily references the iconic Z1 of the 1970s, and that bike was also powered by an inline four. In fact, the styling is one of the major strengths of this Z900 RS. I've yet to meet anyone who doesn't like how it looks. Previously, it was also available in a Cafe Racer variant that had a proper retro looking bikini fairing, but it appears to have been discontinued now, which is a bit of a shame. Still, the naked version is a great choice for anyone who's looking for sweet styling combined with modern day performance. Looks are a nine for me. It's pretty much nearly as good as it gets. Performance is like a seven. It's quite punchy, that engine. I think it's like 110 horses. Affordability is a little bit more than the Yamaha and stuff, so I'm gonna give it a five. Some great bikes so far, but is there anything that does the sort of modern day cafe racer thing better than the Triumph Thruxton RS? I think not. It's one of those perfectly proportioned motorcycles, especially with the accessory fairing, and the level of detail and finish is typical Triumph. It's just a beautiful thing to behold. And yet, on the road, it also performs as well. You've got the Bonneville Parallel Twin, which is an absolute peach. You've got Showa Forks, Olin Shocks, and Brembo Brakes. The tech is on point too as well. You've got a few riding modes and then switchable traction control. And I just don't really see what's not to like about this bike. Perhaps the riding position is a little low for sort of day-to-day -day duties, but if it isn't to your taste, then the Speed Twin offers basically the same spec, but with upright bars. The Thrux then would be just so hard to resist though, because it looks so good. If you want a bike that looks like a cafe racer, a modern day bike, then it doesn't really get any better than this. 10 out of 10 for looks for me. Performance is like a seven, you know, it's sporty, it's quick, but it's, yeah, we got some stuff to come. Affordability, I mean, 13 grand, it's a decent wedge of cash, so let's give it a four. Now I always get a few comments on these list videos saying, that's not a cafe racer, none of these bikes are cafe racers. Look, I know I'm playing fast and loose with the definition of a cafe racer, but perhaps consider that the Speed Triple RR is like the thoroughly modern equivalent of the Thruxton RS. It was born out of the Speed Triple RS platform, which is Triumph's iconic sporty naked road bike, but it adds a little bit of cafe racer spirit with that single round headlight and half fairing. You also get a more canted forward riding position and semi-active electronic Olin suspension. And so the result is something that both looks and performs beautifully. Nine out of 10 for looks for me, I just love the way this bike looks, especially in that super lustrous deep red paint. Performance is 10 on this list. 
it's up there with the quickest bikes and affordability three. In a similar vein, the Super Veloce from MV Augusta is a fast, modern, techie machine that's derived from the F3800 sports bike, but they've just given it a slightly more retro aesthetic, which I think just about qualifies it for inclusion on this list. In fact, it's visually quite similar to the Speed Triple RR. It's got the same small round headlight and bold red paint, but to be fair, the MV did come first by a good few years. Other retro touches include the leather tank strap, the Alcantara a seat, an appointed tail section with another round light to mirror the front end. On some of the models, you also get spoked wheels and a beautiful triple exit exhaust system with two on one side, one on the other, just like the MV Augustas of many years ago. It's an incredible looking bike with the performance to match, but of course they don't come cheap. It's an MV. Looks a 10. I think it's a stunning motorcycle. Performance, again, 10. It's pretty much as good as it gets on this list. Affordability is a two pretty much the lowest score apart from the next bike. Top of the pricing ladder in the cafe racer world, it has to be the V4 CR from Norton. It's a naked adaptation of their V4 SV sports bike. And although we don't have a final price for it yet, I wouldn't expect it to be any less than the 44,000 pounds of its fared sibling. So what do you get for your money? Well, a 185 horsepower V4 engine for a start, as well as top spec equipment from Olin's and Brembo. And and a beautiful mirror polished chassis that's made in house at their new facility in the UK. There's also a decent tech package with a few riding modes and lean sensitive rider aids, but to be fair, you could get all this spec elsewhere for a lot less cash. So you'd have to be massively into the brand and the heritage, and also into the idea of owning something exclusive in order to justify the expenditure. Looks wise, I'm gonna give it a seven. I think it's quite a nice looking bike, but maybe not quite as perfectly formed as the MV. Performance again, 10, you know, 185 horsepower. It's right up there with the best bikes. Affordability, one. I mean, maybe you could give it a zero, but let's give it a one. Zero is pretty harsh. Now that rounds off the list, but which one would I actually buy if it were my money and I was trying to fulfill the definition of a cafe racer? Well, for me, there's only one choice if you've got a decent budget and that's the Thruxton RS because it's got the looks, it's got the performance and yet it still offers a bit of old school charm. On a budget though, I'd probably take the Enfield Continental GT. It's about half the price, although it is about half the power, but I reckon it's got 90% of the good looks. As always though, I'd love to know which one you'd pick down in the comments below. And if you're new here and you wanna see more videos like this, hit subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.